I believe that the power of film is a varietal power that can be harnessed in a variety of ways. I believe we can obtain this power and enhance the silver screen. David Schwimmer Morbius is a film that came out in April 1st, 2022. Originally intended to be an expensive April Fool's joke, but backfired in a spectacular way and sold a whopping 1 trillion tickets. The movie would also go on to get a 203% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 142% audience score as you can see here. And that is only at the time of recording. The score is only going up by the day and fans cannot stop raving about the movie even after the release of the second Sonic movie. The Sonic movie was pretty good but no one can compete with the film titan that is Morbius. Especially when the movie has such talented actors like Michael Keaton, Matt Smith, Adria Arjona, Tyrese Gibson, and of course, Morbius. The director, Daniel Espinosa, does a stunning job in writing a compelling story that not only immerses the audience, but keeps them on the edge of their seat. The beautiful scenery and thrilling action is a true testament to what superhero movies are capable of and how the Marvel legacy continues despite being produced by Sony. The cinematography and acting are perfect and really sets this masterpiece apart from the rest, especially The Batman, which came out around the same time and was described as mid at best. Looking at all these factual statements, it's no surprise that it sold a trillion tickets on opening day alone. And having recently seen it, and absolutely loving it by the way, I thought it only fair to go over the strongest points of the film and talk about why it's so good. So, without further ado, let's swoop in. The plot of Morbius is based on a true story that, interesting enough, doesn't stray too far from its source, making this a documentary almost, if it wasn't for the romantic side plot. It follows Morbius, who becomes a vampire after a dramatic event that transpires giving him superpowers such as strength, speed, flight, bat, and reflexes. After realizing that Red Kool-Aid can't satiate his thirst, he must take to the streets of real-life New York City and sip on real blood. However, the FBI look at the countless murders and, brilliantly enough, deduce that someone or something killed them and pretty quickly suss out Morbius as the killer. One spectacular chase scene later, and we find our protagonist in prison, down on his luck. His brother shows up and threatens to kill his favorite Muppet, Grover, which enrages Morbius and leads into an epic fight scene, as the brother is also a vampire. However, during the really cool fight scene, Morbius misses his attack and accidentally kills his love interest. He cries, holding his one true love in his arms as a tear runs down her cheek. This is a really touching moment, and really makes you feel for Morbius' situation. He stands up and makes a speech about true love which moves everybody in the room. The police decide to let him go because of it, but his brother isn't satisfied, and lunges at Morbius, who expected this of his brother as he is kind of a jerk. The fight scene is carried outside as Morbius unlocks his full potential through the power of love, summoning an army of vampire bats. Overwhelmed and blinded by the bat swarm, Morbius is able to land a sucker punch on his brother, finishing the fight. Morbius and his bats watch as his brother falls into the ocean, and the scene pans out to the full moon, concluding this epic and emotional tale. Oh. Oh. Morbius is a complex character as he is a good guy struggling with his vampiric urges and bloodlust, and Morbius does an amazing job portraying that internal struggle. His body acting as well as his line delivery more than makes up for the fact that most of the dialogue in the book takes place in his mind. It does a really great job telling the story from a novel even though we can't hear his thoughts. It's a really tough dilemma for the screenwriters, but even so, they masterfully show off every detail in the book. This level of storytelling really makes me think of The Hunger Games 3 Part 2, which is the closest comparison I can think of, which makes sense considering how good that movie is. I think Morbius was at his best during the bar fight scene. The confusion on his face as time stops due to his super speed feels genuine, and when he ate several chili dogs at once, I couldn't help but laugh as he comically burps. But how can I not talk about his performance during that emotion scene? Zooey mama. I cried every time I watched it. The sadness Morbius evokes and when he brushes off his lover's single tear, 
Ah! It's a beautiful scene, and I recommend the movie for that scene alone. Hey, Mason Inc. Heard you were talking about my favorite movie, Morbius. Eldy Trainboy, music composer and creator of the hit TV show The Office, what are you doing here? Well, you see, I noticed you left out an interesting and not so well known detail, and I felt it was my duty to come over here and tell you about it. Really? A new Morbius fact? Well, sign me up, I'm all ears. Well, did you know? Morbius was actually a last second addition by the director, which is very hard to tell because of how well he was inserted into the movie. Huh. I did not know that, but I totally see what you're talking about. Thank you, Michael Scott. You're welcome, Macethy. Al Pacino away! <laughs> wow. Just wow. This score has to be the best score to ever grace a movie ever. The orchestra, the synths, the jazz, not to mention Morbius' theme, which I'm playing right now in the video, as you can hear. The best part is that it's free to use, so you can use this epic soundtrack in any project copyright free. The score helps emotional beats hit harder and the fight scenes more intense. The masterfully made soundtrack is easily the best of any superhero movie there ever was or ever will be. Nothing can surpass this score. Not even close. You can say that again. Rhetorical paradox? Heads up 7-up world champion and divulger of slinkies? You're here too? Oh yeah, there's nothing I love more than a good movie, and a good movie soundtrack. Where else can I get the ultimate package but Morbius the best movie ever? I hear you there, Pyro TF2. Is there any knowledge you'd like to share about the score since you're here? Sure, why not? Let's see here. Oh, I got it. But you didn't know that the original soundtrack was made in the Nintendo DS sound font, but the director didn't like Finding Nemo, so they had to do it all over again, but on its xylophone, which made the final cut. Wowza! That sure is something! Get out of my house! I will remain. Well, with that all out of the way, I think it's time to wrap it up. Morbius is the best movie ever, and it's safe to say that Morbius 2 will sell at least 2 trillion tickets. I will sell my soul to Morbius 2. I love Morbius. 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 Subscribe for more Morbius content. A stunning job in right- Bruh. Telling story that not only immerses the audience, I'm gonna brilliantly enough deduce that someone or something killed them. <laughs> Forget about that. <clears throat> he stands up and- Updating Steam. I'm gonna have a really long blooper segment after this one, I can tell you that much. I think Morbius was at his best during this, the... <laughs> I cry... I cry... <laughs>